Nindoroid Metal Gear Solid Solid Snake, rerun. Like the video and subscribe right now. What is just a placebo effect, but most people don't realize. When I trained tech support, our agents would always get pushback from customers when we ask them to power cycle their phone, which 9 times out of 10 would fix their issue. So, I had them tell the customer to read them some numbers off the back of the battery when they were still removable that we absolutely did not need. Then we told them. We refreshed a few systems and they put their battery back in and it's all fixed. Alternatively, when batteries couldn't be removed, we'd tell them that if the phone was powered on while we did the update, it could ruin their SIM card. So they'd make sure to power off their phone. I'd do nothing. They'd turn it back on and it worked great. But if I had told them to power cycle their phones? No way. I absolutely love this story because it's so true. Just two days ago I told a client to close his web browser and reopen it to fix an issue on our page. He'd complained of it seemingly slow today despite videos from several team members demonstrating it wasn't. He closed and reopened and voila it was fixed. Actually he'd had the browser open for months and it was gobbling memory and needed a restart. I worked at a kid's birthday party place for a couple years in high school. So many kids will cry because they fell over, bumped their arm, etc. Never anything bad. I'd say something like, can you shake your foot around? Does it feel better? How about jumping in a circle? Alright we are going to blow on your hand, so it feels better, and then ask if they are ready to play again. Works like a charm. Also bandages for little boo-boos. They think they are healed, and get right back to being happy little kiddos. Your perception of bad luck. The human brain is predisposed to remember bad experiences more vividly than the good ones. Thus, for an example, you may say your luck is always awful at tolls, when in reality you only get stuck in traffic 20% minus 50% of the time. When you give your young sibling an unconnected controller after he, she kept bugging to join the game. Do commissioned creative stuff, if I deliver same or next day, people don't think I spent enough time on it. If I wait 3 days to drive her, people are happy, because they assume I worked on their project non-stop, even though I was done a day or tire. I'm freelance artist and once I painted my client's dog portrait with acrylic. I took photos, and sent it to her, and she said she wanted to fix some part of it. Like hair was too dark and mouth was a little bit too big. Few hours later I accidentally resent one of the photo I sent to her to her again. She immediately relied yes. This is what I want. I haven't touch up anything more but it's okay. This reminds me of a story about a restaurant manager who received a complaint from a regular customer because the restaurant didn't carry Hunt's ketchup and only Heens. So one day the manager just put in's ketchup into a Hunt's bottle for her, and she couldn't tell the difference. Edit, I wrote this at 2am. Some details are left out. The customer didn't like the taste of Heen's ketchup. The manager did replace the ketchup bottle at first, but ran out of the ketchup. Manager knew customer was coming in and quickly replaced the empty bottom with the restaurant ketchup which is Heen's. It was from an older edit post. People don't just do this with creative stuff, if it makes you feel better. We did the same thing, when I did tax returns. A return might be done 15 minutes after the person left the office, but we'd wait 1 to 2 days, before calling them to let them know it was ready. People need to feel like a little more time was spent on something to justify the price. I think it's, because they don't think of it as paying for a person's experience slash education slash artistic talent, they think of it as just paying for a person's time. <laughs> Loading spinners on web pages. I once had a user complain to me a web app was too slow, and it was pretty fast. So I tested him, by making the animation spinner spin much faster. He went to my boss, to praise me how much faster the web app was. Spinpoint.js is what I was using. Not even a spinner, but we added a message after loading, that said nearly there, when it to the next step, and we got significantly fewer slow loading complaints. My dog's meh coming out of his treat tin instead of medicine packaging. Makes a seconds ago disgusting medicine taste mysteriously treat like. 
I just tell him to his face that it's a treat when it is clearly a pill covered in peanut butter. Same here, without the peanut butter. I just go, you want a treat like I normally would, and she comes running and scarfs the pill down. I then of course give her a real treat for being good. I've made my pup's medicine a real high value treat by making her do tricks before I give it to her lol. How does she behave afterwards? And do you typically follow it with an actual treat? If so how many, or just a regular one? I'm getting a puppy soon, so I want to know, thank you. As a former lifeguard, I can assure you that whatever cleanup you see lifeguards doing after someone vomits in the pool is almost certainly just show. There isn't really anything you can do, you just let the filter chlorine take care of it, and pretend to clean, to please the suburban moms. I remember some kid shit in the pool and they closed it down for the remainder of the day. Is it different for shit? Or same story? Just come back tomorrow and it'll be clean and do nothing. Aquatics facility operator here. For vomit, mostly it's just water that comes up, because someone decided to drink the pool instead of playing it. We scoop out any chunks and clear the pool for 20 minutes, to let the chlorine and other chemicals that are automatically fed into the pool do their job to kill any bacteria. For poop, we have to shock the water with more chlorine to be sure all toxins in the fecal matter is killed. Once we put the shock in the pool, the water has a super high chlorine level. After mere minutes everything is dead, but we have to keep the pool closed for 4 to 12 hours, depends on how much shock we had to use. More for honey shits and less for solids, because that much chlorine will irritate skin. I was also a life and we had to shock the pool for a solid like that. For vomit or diarrhea, we had to close everything and drain the pool. However, a small pool in a subdivision. I would imagine pools usually just shut down, shock the pool with a massive amount of chemicals, and reopen once it stabilizes back to acceptable swim levels. The original Febreze was unscented, but nobody believed it worked, so they added scent to it. A lot of these psychology tricks and tips you'll see online. Just in general, a lot of them have no scientific proof, but they work, because everyone thinks they do. This is how I actually live my life, I just tell myself things like these, and placebo into changing my mindset or mood. Yeah let's say you try it it works. I sold Christmas trees as a kid in junior and senior high school. Learned a trick for super fussy customers who had me hold up multiple trees to show them. After the 10th or so tree I'd yell to my cow walker, hey Mike, if they don't want this one put it aside for me. Nicest tree I've seen this year. Worked like a charm. When my cat wants fresh food, but he still has some in his bowl, I pretend to put more in there. He usually falls for it. Does the bowl have high sides? Eating out of bowls instead of flat plates can sometimes cause issues with their whiskers touching the side and being overstimulated, since they're quite sensitive. Indeed it does. Try a flat plate, he might complain less. What you're interpreting as please food slave give me more food might actually be please food slave fix that thing, where my whiskers feel weird when I try to eat this delicious chicken. Huh. That makes sense. My cat always pulls out the food from the bowl and instead eating the floor. Not sure if it's really placebo, but there is research done on how a car door should sound when you close it. A flat and boring pank sound would do just fine, but a lot of people find that soft, plush and yet firm shrump sound reassures them the door is closed. Someone please do a better job here describing car doors closing because mine sucks. My friend's husband is a sound engineer, idk if that's the right word, for this exact thing. His entire job is making sure that the car stuff sounds right. How do you get a job like that? How long it takes a coinster to process and count coins and return a receipt. It finishes quickly. So quickly that folks are skeptical of the accuracy. So a fake delay, with fake counting noises, was built in giving folks more confidence in the results. That's amusing and I absolutely believe it. A lot of scans do this as well. Not virus scans, those just take a damn long time, but sites that show you the best deals are often done in a hundred milliseconds. They're not really doing anything intensive, just make a few requests auto trader or whoever, which probably only returns 15 cars and sort best price. But people wouldn't believe it was the best price, if it came back instantly, they wouldn't think it looked hard enough to make them wait a little. 
Definitely, I've used a background check website that goes through a big elaborate series of scanning records progress bar animations. They even divide it into segments, like chords, checking property records and so on. But here's the thing, they only do all this regamma roll if you search for someone's name on the main site before you have made an account. After you make an account, the exact same kind of searches are done instantly. Reticulating splines. <laughs> Fuck it takes so long to do why, can't I just opt out of that? Because they saw the unintentional side effect of making the user look awkward, standing there waiting for the machine to quit clickety clacking, and decided it was too funny, to not be mandatory. <laughs> I swear my car performs better immediately after it's cleaned. This one is true though. If Gran Turismo taught me anything, it's that washing your car can add 5 to 10 AP. <laughs> that free shipping is a better deal. It generally means they've added the cost into the product instead, but you feel like you've a better deal. This is 100 true, I used to sell furniture at a no gimmicks kind of place, where they were open about all cost, including delivery. I would daff four people, show them how we were still saving them tons of money even with delivery. But some people would still walk out, and go pay literally hundreds of dollars more for free delivery from Ashley. I'm not sure if it still does this, but at one time Google Docs intercepted. The CTRL plus S shortcut and briefly changes the cursor to the thinking cursor, hourglass, beach ball, whatever your computer does. You don't need to save your Google Docs. They save every tiny change on the server. But people are used to doing it. That's like auto-save in games, though. Very often I'll manually save two, just to be sure. In any sort of RPG I always keep three saves, in case anything corrupts or is broken. Fallout New Vegas taught me this the hard way. Oh, now all the NPCs are trying to murder me, and I'm stuck between two rocks. If I don't see a saving animation I'll assume the saving process didn't work. But that's what I mean. There's no saving process. The animation is the only thing that ends when you hit CTRL plus S. Listen, I have decades of paranoid gamer mentality that will note your correctness. Did I just save that? Better save again just in case. I saw an article about how Apple Music made random selection less random, because people would often complain the same artist would follow after a song, so they made an algorithm to not select a song made by the same artist until after some songs 